Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I made this card. I learnt how to do the um, embossed, the raised embossed vellum uh, from a video that I saw um, made by Deb Bowder. So thank you Deb. Um, card pieces you're going to need. Um, I've used pear pizzazz. The card base measures um, eight and a quarter inches by five and three quarters, scored and folded in the middle. Then there's a whisper white layer which measures four inches by five and five eighths inches. Um, my DSP I've used is the paper stack. I don't know what I've done here. Got a mark on it, but that's going to be covered up, so I'm not. I'm duly bothered. And I do know that the uh, designs on the paper stacks are uh, being changed as from second of. June, um, but whatever designs they have, you can use here. Um, I did the spotted one here, stripes here. Um, anyway, this piece measures three and seven eighths by five and a half. You need a piece of our vellum cardstock, which measures about five inches by three inches, and scraps of Whisper White and Pear Pizzazz. To start off with, what you need to do, now I did this beforehand because I needed to allow it time to dry, and that is I've stamped my image onto our, uh, a sheet of the vellum cardstock. The image is from uh, Butterfly Basics, this stamp set here, I've used this. Um, what you need to do is you need to get um, an embossing pad, turn your sheet over so you're working on the reverse side and I'll get my embossing tool which I leave in my scoreboard and what you need to do is with, I start off using the big end of my embossing tool and very gently just start circular movements going around inside the flower. As you go round and you apply pressure you will see that the flower starts coming up white. If you find that the it gets a bit difficult to do I feel that there's a sharp bit on my um, at the end of my embossing tool and so you might find it helps if you use wax paper. You can obviously still see through here but as you go round it does make the um, embossing tool move a lot lot easier. So you just keep on going round until all of the flower has gone white. What you're effectively doing when you're doing this is you're breaking down the fibres. Can you see how white that's going? I don't think you'll be able to see the actual raised bit. Um, even if I tilted it sideways I doubt if you'll see. Um, mm, 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 mm. Oh, I don't know, maybe you can see that. Anyway, um, let me carry on. It will go, in fact, now that I've put wax on there, it should be a lot easier. Yes, it is. And then just go up to the black line on the edge of the flowers. And just keep on working your way round. You need to apply some pressure, but don't apply so much that you're going to tear the vellum and go right the way through. So you finish up with more or less white so that you can hardly see the black that's on the other side. Once you've stamped your image with the stays on ink, I'm afraid I don't know how long it takes for it to dry. Um, I just did mine, went away and left it and came back again. 
There we go. It's lovely, isn't it? It looks really nice. The reason I've chosen this um, stamp to do is because there aren't too many flowers on it and you do need quite a grip onto the stylus and I think if you had too many flowers to do you'd finish up with the cramp in your wrist. Okay, so let's try this again. Going right up to the edge. Don't forget to fill in the centre part. There we go, that should be nice. Yes, that's beautiful. You can see it against the black there. Um, there's one little bit in here that I think is a flower. It may be a leaf, but um, I treat it like a, it's a bud, actually, not a flower. In fact, that one I'm going to use my smaller end. And then finally it's this flower here. Oops, I slipped a bit there. have to have a look see if you can uh, see where I've gone on the other side yes you can see where I've gone over very slightly there okay see that anyway the effect is beautiful really lovely what you need to do next is still working from the wrong side. Um, I'm using my marker pen, the Pear Pizzazz, and I'm just going to now colour in the stems and the leaves, just staying within the lines. Normally I like to do my painting by um, using the inks and squashing the lid down so that some of the paint gets into the lid and then using the uh, blender pens but when I tried that on here I found that it was making the leaves and stems come up to light and I decided that the uh, marker pens is the best tool for this one okay so that's what that starts to look like once you start painting. There's obviously quite a lot here to be done so I'm not going to make you sit and watch me do all of it. Um, in true Blue Peter style, here's one I made earlier, it's all been done, it's all been coloured in. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out You're probably asking yourself, why am I using such a large piece of vellum? Um, the answer to that is, well, because when I first stamped them, I wasn't sure um, what I was going to do with them. So I didn't really know how big I needed the pieces. Okay, so to cut this out, um, what did I do? The circle framelits here it's these ones here starting counting from the inside the numbers I'm using one two three four five six and seven 
and I'm going to cut this my flower out with the largest size bearing in mind that what I'm going to be doing is cutting out this to go on top of it so I've got to leave enough room here so that this doesn't cover it up what I mean is it's going to get covered like that so I need to leave that sort of gap for it okay so that should be fine okay so that cuts the vellum piece out and then with my I didn't bring over some spare pepper um, uh, pizzazz did I? Um, what did I? oh there it is small pieces for this so let me cut this down okay so first of all I need a nice large piece to go at the back of my vellum And then I need the frame that I'm going to put around it. There we go. Just make sure that it's even all the way around there, otherwise you'll finish up with a an uneven frame okay so we finish up with a circle that can be used for another project and that's our frame so let's just move this out of the way again okay. Now also um, I'm using the uh, one of our doilies and sometimes round the edges it's a little bit there's little bits that haven't actually been cut can you see that and I do like to just go around and finish that off not perfect but at least it uh, matches it all up again so what I'm going to do is put my layers on and I'm going to use snail need to watch which way I put this up because I've got that uh, dirty mark on it so I want that to go near the top where my doily is going to go okay I'm going to put my doily onto my card using wet glue I'm just going to put some at the back of this big white bit and just a tiny little bit at the bottom of the big round plain flowers plain as in they don't have any cutouts on them 
Okay, now I'm going to move this a bit lower than I did the last one. I felt that was a bit too high. Okay, so there's that. Then I'm going to put this down again with wet glue. And position that right in the centre. And then I'm going to put this on top and I'm going to put it down with um, glue dots, which I have right here. Um, I'm only going to put a couple on because I'm going to put glue round the edge. The thing is with uh, vellum, you can see glue dots through them. But I'm putting them where you can't see when it's got the colour on it. So there's one there. Put one there. Oops. No, that wasn't very clever, was it? Um, tweezers. Stretch that out again, otherwise it will finish up as a bump. So what I will do is with my wet glue, I'm just going to put a very, very small amount just around the outside. I have to be careful because as I put the vellum down it's going to squash it out sideways. A little bit will be okay but I don't want it squashing out so far that it uh, comes out from underneath the frame once I pop that on top. Okay, so there's that bit there. And then with my frame very, very small amount of glue on that as well. If you prefer, you could put glue dots onto this. I prefer to take a chance and uh, be very careful with the amount of wet glue I put on there. top and make sure it fits around the edge. There we go. Okay, so no glue to be seen. So just to finish off the card I'm going to do the sentiment which I am using uh, from uh, petite pears, I think it is called. Yes, petite pears. I'm using the uh, happy, happy birthday wishes, that one. And I need a piece of whisper white, which I can get from here. And peppers as ink. having a butterfly that I've also put onto the um, pear pizzazz. So I know I have a scrap here, is that going to fit on? We'll soon find out, won't we? I'm sure it will do. She says, <laughs> not that confident. Oh yes, that'll fit on, wow. Okay, so punch that out with the Bitty Butterfly Punch. Fortunately with this punch it leaves 
ink, um, ink all the way round. So I got by by the skin of my teeth with that one. And then to punch this out, I'm using the small oval punch. No, not the small oval punch. The oval punch. In fact, no, they call this one the large oval. I will double check on that and make sure I've got it up on the screen for you. And also with the um, peppers, I need a scallop oval. Pop that on top there. And then my butterfly, fold it so that it gets a little flat bit under his body. So that I can put a little bit of glue there. And pop him there. And a couple of dimensionals. to the front of my card and then finally the pearls along his body I don't know why I'm always calling butterflies he right there we go What do you think of that technique? It's nice isn't it? Uh, it's something a little bit different. Whilst I was um, designing this card um, I made a couple of others. That was my first attempt but I thought that looked a bit wishy-washy um, and I thought the leaves were a bit dark for the rest of it. I mean it's okay but I don't think it's as nice as this. And then I tried that one as well which I quite like. But again, I prefer this. I will put photographs of these up on my blog. Um, but I hope you like it and I hope you decide to give it a try. If you have any questions, please contact me. I will be happy to help you. Um, get rid of that. Um, thank you for watching my video. If you've enjoyed it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button, either at the top right hand side or just underneath the screen. Um, if you'd like to purchase any of the products I've used here, please visit my 24-7 online shop. The link is on the screen. Um, and many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio!